In this session, we are going to deal with some of the important questions regarding the chapter Sources of Energy. Moving on to the first question, name the device which directly converts solar energy into electrical energy. We know that solar cell is one of the main device that directly converts solar energy into electrical energy. Next question, name the factor which enables the ocean to act as storehouse of energy. We know that the water is having a high value of specific heat capacity. So, the high value of specific heat capacity of water enables the ocean to act as storehouse of heat energy. So, next question, charcoal is a better fuel than wood. Explain why. It is obvious that charcoal is a better fuel when we consider with wood. It's because charcoal burns easily when we compare to wood. And the charcoal does not produce smoke on burning and hence it doesn't cause any kind of pollution like air pollution. The third reason why charcoal is better than wood as a fuel is that the amount of heat produced by burning the charcoal is much more than the heat produced by burning the wood. So by all means a better fuel is charcoal over wood. So next question list any three reasons due to which biogas is considered as an excellent fuel. Biogas is considered as an excellent fuel because it is pollution free, it is cheap as a raw material. It's because the cow dung and waste of plants and vegetables is used to produce a biogas which is totally free of course to the farmers. And the main point is that the remains of the used lorry in case of a biogas plant can be used or utilized as manure or a natural fertilizer by the farmers in the field to get good yields of crops. So we get a natural fertilizer from the remains or used lorry in case of a biogas plant. Moving on to the next question, in a solar cooker the following arrangements are made. Write one function of each arrangement. A. The box is made of insulating material such as plastic or wood. It is made so because it is used to avoid loss of heat from the solar cooker to the surroundings. Second part, the inner walls of the box are painted black. We know that in a solar cooker, the inner walls of the box is painted by using the color black. Why is it so? Because the black surface is capable of absorbing more heat radiations of the incident energy. It is due to the, this property of black color that inner walls of the box of the solar cooker are painted black. See, the box is covered with a transparent glass sheet. We know that a transparent glass sheet is used to cover the solar cooker box. It's because the transparent glass sheet won't allow the reflected heat radiation to go outside the box. Last one, a plain mirror is hinged at an angle at the top of the box. It is done so because to increase the amount of solar energy which is incident on the transparent glass sheet. That's why a plain mirror is also being used in a solar cooker. Next question, is geothermal energy renewable or non-renewable source of energy? We know that geothermal energy means the energy which is obtained from heat of the earth that is thermal means referring to heat geo means referring to earth and what do you mean by renewable it is the energy that can be replenished or produced within a short period of time by nature itself so of course geothermal source of energy is a renewable source which is replenished by nature itself due to the geological changes molten rocks formed in the deeper hot regions of the earth's crust will be pushed upwards and that will be trapped in certain regions called hot spots. So when the underground water comes in contact with the hot spot, steam is generated. We know that when water gets boiled or when it is supplied with heat, it then turns into the next state of matter that is steam. So sometimes the hot water from the region find outlets at the surface. So such outlets are known as 
hot springs. So the steam which is trapped inside the rocks will be routed through pipes to turbine and running of turbines will finally lead to produce electricity. So of course geothermal energy is a very useful renewable source of energy. Now the next question draw a level schematic diagram of a biogas plant. What is used in case of the slurry which is formed and that is left behind in the biogas plant. So we need to draw a diagram which depict a biogas plant and we need to finally analyze what are the different processes that is happening in case of a biogas plant. So the arrangement of producing biogas from animal dung, human excreta, industrial or domestic waste is known as biogas plant. So the particular picture shows a fixed dog type biogas plant. So from this plant the biogas is being produced after so many process. So what are the different parts of a fixed dome type biogas plant? As you can see it consists of a well like underground tank and that is made of bricks and cement. And this tank is called as a digester and it has inlet as well as outlet valves. So the roof of the tank is in the shape of a dome and that's why it is called as dome shaped biogas plant. A gas outlet pipe at the top of the dome is fixed and the dome of the digester acts as a storage tank for the biogas. And you can see there is a mixing tank made and what is this use? And the mixing tank which is made above the ground level is connected to the inlet valve of the digester through a sloping inlet chamber below the ground level. On the other side of the digester what you can see? You can see a rectangular tank called outlet chamber is connected with bricks and cement. So this outlet chamber is connected to the overflow tank which collects the used slurry. And how does it work? The animal dung is mixed with water to make slurry in the mixing tank. And this slurry will enter the digester through the inlet chamber. Then the digester is filled with partially with slurry so that enough space is left above it in the dome for the collection of biogas. So what is the left slurry used? The slurry in the digester tank is left for about 2 months for fermentation. And who does the fermentation? That is the main question. So the anaerobic microorganisms are responsible for this action. As a result of fermentation, biogas is formed which is collected in the dome. So when sufficient amount of biogas is collected in the dome, it exerts a large pressure on the slurry and force it to go into the overflow tank through the outlet chamber. So there is an inlet chamber as well as outlet chamber. So the biogas is taken out from the dome through a pipe and used for different purposes like cooking food or heating water whenever required. So the once the biogas plant starts functioning, more and more slurry may be fed in the digester to get continuous supply of biogas. So the used slurry collected in the overflow tank is rich in nitrogen and phosphorus and that is essential for growth of crops and plants. Hence this used slurry can be used as a manual or natural fertilizer to increase the yield of our crops. So the biogas plant is indeed an essential and good one for the people as well as especially the farmers. Next question, what are the limitations of extracting energy from wind, waves and tides? So we know that there are different sources of energy and one of the main sources is wind. So what are the main limitations of extracting energy from wind? We know that wind is not available at all times. It doesn't blow all over the day. And to construct a wind farm, we require a very large area of land. And the main limitation is that it is not possible to have a windmill everywhere we have to run it because the minimum wind speed should be 15 km per hour so that it's only possible in open areas like seaside. So these are certain limitations of harvesting energy from wind. What are the limitations in case of waves? 
the main shortcoming is that wave energy should be in a viable proportion only when the waves are very strong so the waves can be used to extract energy only when the waves are very strong and the waves may not be strong all the time that's the main shortcoming and also in order to set up the devices to trap wave energy a huge initial cost is required and in case of tides very few sea coasts in the world have suitable sites for purpose of harnessing the tidal energy and there is another limitation for harvesting tide energy is that the rise and fall of tides happens only twice in a day and that is not sufficient if we need the electricity in a continuous manner or in a huge manner so the tides which happens only twice in a day may not be sufficient for all industrial and commercial purposes on what basis would you classify energy sources and as renewable and non renewable and give examples for both so the renewable source of energy are those which can be regenerated again and they may not be depleted in a fast rate what in case of non renewable source of energy they are those sources which would get depleted some day and cannot be regenerated within a short period of time so the renewable source of energy is generated again and again by nature itself whereas non renewable are those are very less amount in regeneration so renewable sources examples are solar energy wind energy etc but non renewable resources are the ones like fossil fuels where we use coal natural gas petroleum etc so we must be very careful to use the renewable source of energy in a much higher manner and always use non renewable sources like fossil fuels in a judicious manner that it is also available for the future generations